Oh boy. Hi guys. Uh, well, I'm here uh, to give my thoughts pretty much on this. Uh, the final episode series finale of Avatar Legend of Korra. Um, this is going to be a little differently because this this is for just the last two episodes that aired uh, tonight or today. They put it up early whenever this goes up. But uh, I'm here to talk about this. Um, this was a very interesting and pleasant series finale, in my opinion. It really was. Um, I was expecting some deaths, uh, and we did get some deaths, but I was expecting deaths from one of the main cast, actually, uh, believe it or not, but we didn't get that. Um, so, I'm going to talk about this in a sense. Um, where should I begin? Uh, let's start off with the first uh, episode 12 or uh, episode, uh, what is that? 51, I believe, yeah, of the complete, complete series, uh, Battle of the Colossus, basically. And uh, basically, this this episode really, um, as a mech fan, and who is a huge mecha fan, um, this kind of really intrigued me, but also it had remnants of uh, uh, War of the Worlds, in my opinion. It felt like that, you know. Uh, the Team Avatar, Korra, and everybody are doing all they can, as we see, to devise a plan to take down the giant mecha with the spirit gun attached to it. Spirit gun. <laughs> That's all to my Yu Yu Hakusho fans out there. But yeah, um, yeah, we, we see they're doing everything they can. They're trying to evade the attacks. I mean, they had some beautiful scenes where we had all the airbenders literally pushing this mecha back and we had the earthbenders on the ground you know trying to stabilize it as well um and even with all that still still the suit kept coming and it was just like and it really was a dire set for the team. And it's like, oh, how do we beat this thing? And they couldn't really uh, metal bend it because it was uh, the outside of the mecha was made out of platinum. And as we've seen in the series, uh, metal benders can't bend platinum. And that, so they can't bend it from the, from the outside, the exterior. So uh, they couldn't do anything about that. Uh, but we do get to see the team starts coming up with ideas of basically being able to, you know what I'm saying, defeat the mecha suit, uh, Kavira's mecha suit. Uh, one of the things is even we even get a sense of uh, Batar Jr. helping out. You know, he, he finally comes to his senses and realizes that you know, he, he was a fool, you know. Career kind of played to his emotion. And um, I kept saying throughout all my reviews of this that he was whipped. You know, he was just, whoosh, you know, so whipped on her. Um, but he realized that he, he made a mistake and he wants to correct it. And even though he has some of the knowledge, still it's not enough. And it was to that point we start to see more help arrive that you get all the big brains together, including Asami's father, um, who devises a plan as well. And th that was uh, really, really interesting as well. Another big thing that happened in the episode is that uh, <laughs> oh boy, uh, Varric proposed to Julie. Um, that was sweet. That was sweet to see. That 
that actually had me, um, I'm like, it's about damn time. Almost like, yeah. Uh, it was really sweet. And you, you, you figure, I didn't think that was going to happen in that episode, but it did. But I, I love the line. He's like, would you do me the pleasure of doing the thing? And it's just like, he didn't even say, will you marry me? He just said, can you do the thing? And she knew exactly what it, what he, she knew he was talking about. Um, so once they really figured out the plan, we see that um, still some things are going not according to plan in terms of they used those little hummingbird mechas they had, which was really cool. Um, and they needed to get inside the mecha. However, there was a sacrifice that uh, I didn't... I wouldn't. I didn't say I didn't see coming, but I saw it coming in a sense. Um, Asami's father sacrifices himself to aid to Korra and the gang to get inside the Mecca, um, and pretty much he he basically ejects Asami out of it and tells her, "I love you, Asami." And uh, the Mecca hand just squashed him, and it's just like, ooh. Um, I kind of thought Asami was going to, you know, get killed too, but glad she didn't. Um, and so the team gets inside the suit, actually. And that's where pretty much after that, the majority of the the next couple, the last episode pretty much takes place inside the suit. And Korra and them, to, you know, use their break up in the groups to stop the mecha. You know, stop the the spiritual energy that's powering the suit, um, and uh, we get a pretty decent another. We get a nut. Well, I say which round? I think round three or two between Korra and uh, Kavira, and this time it was a better fight because now that Korra's back up to stuff and she's back up to, you know, she's no longer feeling guilty and you know feeling. Uh, emotionally drained her head's back in the game and you see that this time the fight between her and Kavira was much better and I loved it I was like now nah, this is much better you know it was pretty much back and forth between them and they they're up in this the, the area where Kavira is controlling the mecha suit while um, Mako he knows Mako and Bolin try to stop the spiritual part of it, um, realize that Mako needs to channel lightning into it, because this, as we remember, the spiritual parts will blow up if they get electrified, and Mako actually, you know, charges, you know, his, um, his electricity that he's done before, um, and then once again, a very touching scene between the brothers, you know, you know, Bo Bolin telling Mako, look, you're, you're cool, you know, just, come back, you know, uh, you know, you know, give him a hug and says, I love you and things like that. And Mako gets the soldiers that they knocked out. Bolin gets the soldiers that they knocked out out of there. And Mako does his thing. And this is where I thought Mako was going to die. Um, I thought he was going to self-righteous death for him. Um, but you can clearly see that once again, you know, it's always been canon, you know, you're channeling Electricity through your your body is very dangerous. We've seen that in the original Avatar. Um, you can kill yourself, and um, we see it, it starts to take a, a strain on Mako, like, and it knocks him out. Clearly knocks him out. And I was I was I was like I was glad they kept that cannon. Like, yeah, it wasn't like retconned. Um, but uh, we the the. It was really good. Um, just the, the fight between Korra and Kavir was really good. And I liked how uh, it ended in a sense that it clearly, it clearly ended almost like a draw. Like no one really had the upper hand until the suit fell and, um, you know, they, they go off and, you know, Korea, Korea is, you know, she's still so headstrong. She knows it's almost like you you lost. Give it up. Time to quit. She still has that fight in her. 
and she Cora chases after her. You know, um, Carrera actually is able to retrieve, get close enough to the cannon because the cannon got ripped off and it was thrown into the binded area and it was still there. And Korea actually uh, was aiming it at Korra. Um, and Korra is like, you know, give up. Like, it's over. And she's like, no, now it's over. And she shoots it right at her. I was like, oh. And luckily Korra is able to get out of the way. But the cannon starts to malfunction. And um, Korea tries to shut her off. It's not going off. And it looks like, because it's on the vine, so it's swinging all over the place now. It's firing all over, and then finally, like, let's say Corvira is over here, and she she pretty much falls that way, and the cannon's swinging, so finally it starts to jettison back to her. And this is where I thought Cora was going was gonna to die, is basically Cora jumps in the way, and blocks the cannon and the cannon with her spiritual power does something and it opens up a new spiritual portal and uh, unfortunately everybody thinks Cora's dead you know nobody can find her nobody everybody's looking for her everybody's looking for Corvira you know her her Corvira's men are looking for her and finally, we find out where they are. They're in the spirit world. And that is where we get to... Korra starts to really get more of a glimpse and more understanding and tells Korvira, like, I understand your, your logic because I see myself in you. And so maybe this is where that balance comes from. And we get to see that. And, you know, as much as Korvira is trying to say, you know nothing how I am. Why did you save me and things like that? Cora understands. And you clearly can see that she has grown, you know. And I was liking that. I did like that. I liked that a lot that, you know, over time we started to see Cora's becoming the avatar that most of us want her to be or what she needs to be. And, uh, they come back out of the portal and uh, Herrera surrenders. And she literally apologizes, you know, for everything she's done. She's going to take whatever punishment is going to be dished out to her like, a, like the woman, strong woman she is. Even though she can be a stone cold, you know what, at times, uh, but she's going to take it. Um, she has much to answer for and she's, she's not quivering fear of it and she's not running from it she's she's gonna do it um and that's pretty much we then we we pick up where the episode ends you know the, the spirits come back and you know we we celebrate julie and Varric's wedding um everybody's having a good time uh cora and mako have a you know, a moment where he tells her, you know, I always got your back no matter what. Uh, prince, the prince or the king or however you want to, he decided he's not going to be the, uh, the ruler of the Earth Kingdom. Um, he decides that the Earth Kingdom should have like a democracy where it would elect its leader. So, uh, and, you know, you can see his character has grown as well. And, you know, Korra also has a moment with her second dad, you know, as, as I like to call him. <laughs> and then uh, it's just her and her her girlfriend. Um, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, or her BFF. Um, and they both realize that, you know, they need a vacation. Uh, Asami realizes that, you know, if, she, though she lost her father, if she had lost Korra too, she would have been devastated. And right here, it constantly, clearly, and they clearly showcase that they're, they're a couple. Come on, let's let's just let's let's not beat around the bush, guys. Cora and Asami are girlfriends. They they are lovers. It is, and even the ending even implied it too. Just the way when Asami says, "Okay, I want to go on vacation, but I've never been to the spirit world," and they're holding hands, and then they turn to each other very passionately and look at each other, 
and it fades out. And that's how it ends. So right there, I'm like, that's so sweet. You know, that's nice. You know, you know I was like, oh, you know, because it was like, look, come on. Like, if you're not going to announce it, then they clearly showed it. Showed it like there's something more than just a friendship between them. And I'm cool with that. Uh, but the episode, the the series finale, was good. It ended very well for me. Um, was I satisfied? Yes. Uh, do I? Would I want more? Would I like more? Yes, I would. I would like another Avatar series. Um, I really would. And this is where you know I really would talk more about this as a Steven overview, but I'll just talk about it a little bit here. Yes, I would want another Avatar. Um, I think it'd be cool to have a <coughs> another Avatar, uh, another Avatar series, um, but we don't know. It's, it's not up to us. We're just fans. Uh, for me, if anything, in terms of the the main protagonist, if they were to do it, would I like mind another female? No, I wouldn't. Um, if it was me, I would want a Earthbender as an avatar. We haven't seen an Earthbender as an avatar. You know, Aang was an airbender. Korra was a waterbender. Those are their first, you know, we, we, we've seen that there were firebenders that were, you know, avatars from past lives, but um, I would like an Earth Bender. One thing I wanted from the I wanted from the uh, the series finale after the final battle and everything was the fact that Korra was connected with her past lives in a sense and her past lives are saluting her in a sense. That would have been really touching for me to see Aang and the rest of them telling her you did well. You know, you did well and continue to do that until you are ready to join us. You know, I would have loved that. Uh, like I said, n no, I thought there were going to be some main cast member deaths, but they weren't. Um, I could say clearly, out of the four season villains, Corvera really stood out amongst all the rest of them. Um, she clearly, clearly stood out compared to Amon and uh, uh, Batum and you know the rest. Of, you know the rest of them. It uh, it was really better. She she really played up, and Zelda Williams did such a fantastic job voicing her. Um, she, and I can clearly say this, Miss Williams, your dad would be very proud of you. Um, you did a fantastic job. Um, and other than that, I got nothing more to say, guys. It, I really enjoyed it. Um, would I watch it again? Yeah, I probably would watch it again. I, uh, I'd watch it again. Uh, but would I want more Avatar? Yeah, I would. I just don't know where they would take it because this was kind of like modernizing the Avatar. So where would you go from there? That's the thing. If they were to do another, where would they go? You know, where what would the direction be um, in terms of that? Because like I said, this was more like a modern take. Sure, it looked more 1930-ish, 40-ish, 40-ish, but it still was modernized. Um, but like I said, for me, I would have to say, yeah, I would love to see an Earthbender as an avatar. I would even want a new bending ability. Um, I think we all would. I think we all would want a new bending. Let's see, we had earth bending, we got lava bending, metal bending, maybe light bending. You could bend the light, like, and turn it into beams and things like that. Kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> Uh, kind of a little bit like Dazzler. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, but other than that, thank you for watching my final uh, recap thought of our 
Avatar, Legend of Korra. I, I completed every season. What an accomplishment. Now, I'm not the only one that did reviews on this show. You know, you had Mr. J, you had Comic Uno, you had Cirque Show. You know, you had a lot of people that actually liked the show. Um, and I want to thank everybody who worked on the show, all the voice talent, everybody. Like I said, you all deserve an applause and congratulations. And from me to you guys, you get this. Thank you very much. And uh, I am out. I'll see you guys around. As always, this is my brain kid. Peace and love. Stay tuned. Keep it real. Avatar Legend of Korra is done. Mission complete. Take care.